YouTubers, Pastor Bob NCC. I want to talk to you for just a minute about complaining. You know what? All of us as human beings, we get to the point where we don't like something and we start complaining. And especially self-pity. You know, think, woe was me, I got it so rough. Uh, we all can fall into that trap. I fall into that trap. And uh, therefore, I wanted to talk to you guys about it for just a minute. So listen, I am an average middle class person. I have a good job. Uh, I have a retirement from the military that I've been drawing on for years. And let me tell you where I personally fall on the wealth scale. If you take the bottom, here's a little kid that lives in Calcutta, India, that's never going to own a pair of shoes his whole life. Dirt poor. Or some little kid born in Haiti. And then you take on the top of that scale up here, you have the Donald Trumps, the Rockefellers, the Kennedys, all these wealthy, wealthy families. You know where I fall in that scale? I fall right up here at 99.7. I am at 99.7 on the richest people in the world. That's where I fall with where I live in America and with my income, 99.7. And if you took all the people that lived throughout history, I'm at 99.9. I mean, I live in a house that if I get just a little bit hot, just a little bit hot, I walk over to the wall, I turn this dial, and all of a sudden my house becomes cold. I get a little chill, I walk over there and I hit that dial and it warms my house up. If I'm sitting in my chair and I get hungry, I don't even have to get up. I get out my cell phone, I call up, and the pizza guy knocks on the door and brings food right to my house. We live in a total time of total luxury. That's where we're at on the wealth scale. And God has blessed me immensely, and every time I complain, every time I don't like the way something's going, that's like telling God, Lord, I know you've blessed me all this much, but you know what? I'm having this problem. Woe is me. I, I could care less. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we do that. So listen, the people of Israel did that, and when they did it, the Lord sent fire down and fried several thousand of them. And I want to go over that for just a minute. Numbers 11, 5 to 6, this is what it says. They're talking about food because they, they were thinking they had it so rough out there in the desert. We remember the fish which we did eat freely in Egypt. The cucumbers and the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now our soul is dried away and there's nothing to eat besides this manna before our eyes. Well, that manna that God rain down from heaven every night that was a representation of Jesus Christ when they complained about the food they used to eat in Egypt and now we're stuck with this manna that God got irritated and he killed several thousand of them this is what it was they talked about all the good food we had in Egypt but they forgot that they were slaves in other words they remember the good and they forgot the bad. It's the same thing today when, when Christians look back at their former life and they say, oh, you know what, I used to love going out partying, I used to love doing this, I used to love doing that. Satan lets them remember the good times, but they don't remember sitting there puking into the toilet. They never remember that. You don't remember being in handcuffs, getting a DUI or something along those lines. We always remember the good and forget the bad. So listen. This is what Paul tells us. He gives us a principle to follow in Philippians 4, 11 to 13. This is what he says. He says, For I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. I know both how to abase and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. In other words, Paul's telling us, listen, you're going to have good times and you're going to have bad times. You're going to have good times and you're going to have bad times. The key is, is to be content, to be steady through all that. If you're in a bad time, don't worry, it's going to turn around. If you're in a good time, don't get used to it because pretty soon it's going to become a bad time. Times go up and down, but we're to stay steady. We're to stay focused on the Lord. And this is what he says is the key. The key is to wait on the Lord and to be about His business. If you're in a bad time, just wait. Just sit back and pray. Don't complain. Pray about it 
and pretty soon the Lord will turn it around. You just have to wait on the Lord. This is what it says in Isaiah 40, 31. It says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then Psalms 27, 14 goes on to tell us, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. People, listen. There's two choices. One brings about God's anger, and one brings about relief and God's blessing. Whenever you feel like complaining, whenever you think you got it so rough that you have it worse than everybody else, whenever you think that, instead of complaining, pray about it. Say, Heavenly Father, this is what's wrong right now in my life. Would you please help me? And then once you pray, you wait. You just wait, be content, and the Lord will send deliverance. He always does. He always does. Good times, bad times, Paul tells us to be content. Pray about it and wait on the Lord. That's what we're to do. Are you saved? If not, you need to be. You need to repent. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do, you will live on into eternity. If you don't, you won't. It's that simple. Heaven or hell, you choose. And just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.